In order to follow the rules of clean code, we need to make sure that every method has zero or one argument. So what do we do about cases where we have constructors with multiple arguments? The constructor, of course, needs to ensure that its object is created in a stable and consistent state so that we can use the object. Here I have an achievement class, and an achievement is defined by a name and a description. It needs both of those values in order for it to be correctly configured. But I also want to get rid of this method that has two arguments. Constructors, of course, are methods like any other, and so we apply the clean code rules to them. A very common solution here is the builder design pattern. We'll be talking more about design patterns in the coming weeks, but this will give you a tool that you can use right away in your assignments. The main idea of this builder design pattern is to recognize that constructing an achievement can be the responsibility of a different object. So I will make an achievement builder. Now there are many, many ways to implement this builder design pattern. I'm going to show you one way that is pretty straightforward. Hopefully you can understand all the pieces to it. I am going to make use of an inner class to do this, which I'm going to call builder. Now this has the advantage that the name of this builder, if I were to completely scope it, will be achievement.builder. We'll see that when we update the test case. So my builder is going to be responsible for each individual step of constructing the achievement. So I'm going to give it a name and a description. And I'm also going to give it mutator methods. Okay, so that will load up the builder with the data that we need. The next step for the builder is to add the eponymous build method. And the build method is going to give us an achievement. The way that I like to tie, to get, uh, tie together the builder with the constructor is to send the builder itself into the constructor. This here refers to the builder. So now I can change this constructor to take a builder. And the builder, of course, has the fields that we need to construct the achievement. So by taking this approach, we have removed all of our methods that have more than one argument. Let's go update our client code, which in this case is our simple unit test. Now in order to change this, we need to use the builder. We can create an achievement builder like so, and configure it with the data that we need. Where does the achievement come from? Builder.build. .build. So we do need more lines of code to make this work, but every line is unambiguous. We no longer have to remember that name comes before description in our parameter list, for example. Let's run the test just to be safe. Run as JUnit test. It's fine. Now there are many ways, as I mentioned, there's many ways to implement the builder design pattern. This is close to the way that I like to do it. Um, one thing I'll point out is that we can do error checking in many different places here. For example, if the name cannot be null, we can put a null check here. This follows the fail fast principle, that as soon as something, as soon as we know that something is wrong, for example, null is passed into this method, we can do something about it, but in this case throw an exception. Of course we could do a similar thing in set description. If we want to ensure that both of these methods have been called before build is called, of course we can do that here. If name was null, we could throw a legal state exception and say, name must be specified. And of course, we could do something similar with the description. And the level of error checking you need depends on your context. This is really just some sample code. 
this is enough that you could follow this and uh, use the builder pattern in this way. I'll show you a small modification to this that I happen to like, and that's to move from what is sometimes called a push button or command query API design into a fluent API design that reads a little bit more like natural language. This uh, may be a little unfamiliar, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and try it. What I'm going to do here is make each one of these return the builder. It's going to return itself like this. And of course, we could put in error checking if we want to. Now instead of calling this, well, you, let me leave the name alone. I'll leave the name alone for now so you can see what happens when we do this method chaining. That allows us to change our implementation here to something like this. Calling set name returns the builder. Calling set description also returns the builder. Oops, that build. I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I don't need any of this code anymore. I'm going to use Control shift f to format my code, and it's, it's going to leave it like that. All right, I might force some line breaks here, just to make this a little more readable. This is an Eclipse trick. Um, well, in general, you can do this in any Java program, uh, but I use it within Eclipse to get the vertical formatting that I want. There. And this technique is called method chaining. So after I call this method, which is a constructor, I get an object. I call a method on it, which returns that object. I call this method on it, which returns that object again. And I call build, which returns the achievement. I happen to like the way this reads, uh, although calling these set name and set description still sound uh, very um, command query and not very fluent. I could change this to something like with name and description. There it is. So I'm going to make an achievement with name and description, build it. That's sort of nice. And of course, if I'm going to do that, I could make this simply return the achievement and get rid of the need for the build method entirely. So that should still work. And you know, making the client know that there's a builder, that's kind of an implementation level detail that isn't that important. We can get rid of that too if we add a static factory method. Now here we have to make a few more structural changes for me to get this done. I'm going to modify the builder so that it takes the name in its own constructor. We no longer need this method at all. Coming back over here, this changes into uh, depending on where you want to put your line breaks. It might look something like this. So this is still the builder design pattern. It's a very different implementation from the one we started with. Now we're saying if we want an achievement, We'll make an achievement with this name and this description. How does it work? We have a static factory method that returns a builder object, and that builder object constructs the achievement after this call. We could, of course, uh, implement the builder in many other ways. This is one of my personal favorites. Uh, any which way that works for you, you and your code is all right. Um, as we move forward, I'd like you to think about the difference between the two implementations of Builder that I showed. Um, but like I said, for now, this is enough to get you started. Enjoy.